Good morning, afternoon, evening, wherever you are. We're doing a film today on the workings of a lobster trap, how it works, how it's built. And uh, I'm at the, the main center for the fisheries, coastal fisheries in Stonington, Maine. We had the touch tank in here last year, and we also had the trap. A lot of you I explained the trap to, and a lot of them I didn't. So this way, everybody gets a chance to study the trap a little bit, if you will. I hope you enjoy it. All right, I'm going to give you the kind of the rundown on the trap itself. Okay, this particular trap is what they call the standard four-foot trap. They make them right-handed and left-handed according to which side of the boat you're working on. Okay, some people use left-handed traps on the right-hand side of the boat and some people use them the other way around. So it, it's each fisherman's preference as to which way the door opens and which side they're hauling on. And most generally that's determined by which end you tie this rope on when it comes up out of the water they grab this is called the becket they grab that and swing the trap aboard with that uh, on the bottom of the trap I'll roll her up here so you can see him some people use rebar some people this is it happens to be an oak runner they're called runners that keeps them off the bottom so the trap is elevated and nothing isn't sitting right in the mud and uh, this also protects the wire. The wire here is rubber coated. And when it comes aboard the boat, this here takes the wire and not the rubber off the wire. Once you knock the rubber off of the wire, they rust out much quicker. You, you, this will extend the life of the trap probably another two years. Anyway, they cost anywhere from 100 to $130 a piece according to the fisherman's preference. This particular one is set up with what we call shrimp mesh. Shrimp mesh is the small mesh in here which is nylon and this particular one has three sets of mesh. Some of them have four. They will have two here, one here, and another one further down. These little holes that you see in the side in this piece of plastic, it's called a vent, escape hatch, whatever you want to call it. There's one on each side. There's another one on the other side. These have to be, these, these sizes are regulated by the state and that lets the juvenile lobsters and crabs escape when the bigger lobsters should enter the trap so they don't get eaten. So that's the way that we uh, help prolong and keep our industry alive. This is the baiting station. The lobster is a bottom dweller. He will come in and he will go to bottom and he will go to the feeding station. You try not to get the bag right on the bottom because if you're fishing mud bottom, the, the bait, the feed will get in the mud and it sours it. So once they get in here, they get under this ring. Now they've, they've kind of got bewildered because they've lost the way that they got in and they may or may not find this. We don't catch them all, however. They do crawl around. They, they can go right up the side of this thing and they'll crawl around and their antennas will are always searching for uh, a way out, okay, now that they've eaten. You have to remember that a lot of these traps are set in deep water and it's dark down there. So it isn't like that. what we can see here. They don't see that. They have to feel it with their antennas and their senses. So a lot of times they will take the path of least resistance. And they will go up this mesh. They will go up through this hoop and they will fall down again. Now they're a long way from the hoop. They put this little gizmo on there, it's called a gate lock. That locks a hole for them to get out. A lot of the traps, the fellows build themselves. A lot of them are built by people that just build traps. You can buy the wires and it's in a flat pile and it's all cut to the pre-designated size that you want for your trap. 
and a lot of people have their own benders and they like to bend their own in the winter time when they're not doing anything and they get these clip guns and clip them together and that's basically what holds them together is these clips and then it comes to the problem of weight we got to get the trap to sink so this particular uh, gentleman has used bricks he's got three bricks sometimes they kind of uh, assemble line making traps one guy puts the bricks in I mean, one guy puts the mesh in another guy puts this this in somebody else is clipping these corners on these plastic corners they also put in what they call bridges this is a bridge here there's one up here and that's for strength to keep the trap from doing this and to keep the trap from bending it makes it strong when you're pulling on this uh, some of these boats have got 18 inch haulers it's a round winch that yanks them up and believe you me they come and if they're caught on a rock something's going to come you either get the whole of it or half of it or a piece of it one or the other but it will come or break the line one or the other they're very very powerful you've got a 600 horsepower diesel engine with a big pump pumping hydraulic fluid to it something is going to happen they use this rubber it's called bungee cord to lock the door it's a piece of the wire that they may cut out of one of these holes they put a little they have a um, tool made that's a round tool they put it in the vise and just close it and that puts this bend in to keep it even and they just lock out like that then they put this little extra one on the back and that's to keep the door from doing this we do they do put dog bones on them these are called dog bone this is uh, put on when this becket is tied there's a special way that you tie this this here is a, a bowling if you can see it and it's tied right into the line this is a floating rope that floats up off the bottom that's what it's designed to do and that keeps it so the lobster doesn't see it on the top line they use sinking rope and they use that so that the other boats don't get in your line when the when the traps are in the water if you use floating rope on top the boats don't see it you've lost your traps so if you put your name tag in most of the guys you'll get your trap back they'll they'll give it back to you they want theirs back and we like to make sure that they get them back there's not a right way and a wrong way to a certain degree it's whatever works and whatever works when you see one guy come in with 100 pounds and he's got 800 traps another guy comes in with 1200 pounds and he's got 800 traps ah uh, that gets you thinking <laughs> what am i doing wrong so uh not that you not that he's going to tell you what he's doing or where he's fishing that's what you got to figure out and what am i doing wrong am i putting the bait in the wrong place in the trap and have i got the the mesh too steep have i got it too low that all of this stuff is is uh goes with it that's basically how it works The different colored wires don't mean a thing. Some are purple, some are blue, some are yellow, some are pink, some are black. It, the wire doesn't, the color doesn't mean a thing. It, I don't think love to see color. None of them ever told me they did, so <laughs> I, I don't think they do.